Hi everybody, today I'm building up uh, a sheath for um, Stephen. This is, um, Mary's ordered this for Stephen. It's going to be his birthday soon. And uh, he wants a, a left handed sheath. So what I've done here, this, this is not an educational video because I don't consider myself... There are people out there that are uh, expert level workers and I'm, um, I, I'm just, uh, you know, just showing you this is how I do it. Uh, if you want to see a real expert at work uh, with his leather work, uh, Albie Knives and uh, Albie Leather Lee. He's uh, got some fantastic um, leather making videos and I've learnt a lot of my uh, skills via that. So um, this isn't designed to be a tutorial. This is just to show you the customers or potential customers what I what effort and what goes into me and how I build my sheaves. Uh, and then you'll get an idea uh, at the quality of my product, I hope. And also because uh, Louise in Florida uh, asked, how do you do your stitching now? So I thought I'd show you. Anyway, I get my leather in big, big hides, bigger than this table, as big as this table anyway. And then I, I mark out the templates. And you can see that I've got a, one marked that way and one marked that way. Now when these are built up, one would be a right hand and one would be a left hand. Now, Stephen wants a left handed one, so that's going to be that one there, that'll be a left hand, that will become a left handed sheath. So the first thing I do, I stamp out these radiuses here, with a cutting tool. Um, this gives me a nice smooth radii. Just like that. So you can't cut accurately the internal curves by hand very easily. So the next thing I do is then to cut the um, glasses falling off my head. Next thing I do is then to uh, to cut out the sheath using the Stanley knife. So that's the basic uh, profile shape of the uh, sheath cut out now. The next is to uh, mark out a centre line on the back. Right, I've marked out a centre line I'm using a V groover. That's one of these tools here. It's in the free hand following that line. And put a series of series of grooves into the leather. Using the first groove as a guide, just go either side of that. And that just, that just allows the lever to fold a bit easier. So you can see now the sort of shape of the sheath, how it's going to look. This uh, shape and dimensions is what I've come up with over uh, the last two or three years of experimenting a little tweak here, a little change there to make it perfect for my knife. The next thing I do 
is mark how far the welt's going to come up here. So I've got to allow a little bit for a for a drain. So I want my stitching to come probably to about there. So I put the tiniest of marks. You can barely see it, but it's enough for me to see what where I want my stitch groove to start or end. In this case, because I'm right-handed, I'm going to be starting down here and ending at that little tiny dot that I've put down there. See my little dot, and I'm going to stop just there on my little dot. So that's my stitch line, stitch groove put in. You can see it running along there. Look. Next thing I do with a set of um, what's called pricking irons. And mark where the stitch holes are going to go. Put a bit of leather behind. I'm going to start at the top. Making sure I'm holding it vertical. Switch to a smaller two prong chisel to go around curves. So that's the uh, stitching holes put in. I've got to do the one coming down here. I do a double row at the top, but I'll do that now. And because my stitch groover won't go in that far, I've got to use a, what's called a freehand. If it's in focus, a freehand groover, just to uh, make a little stitch line for the thread to sit in. And again up here. Come back down four stitches. So that's the uh, stitching put in on the sheath. I then mark out where I want the back threads to go on the on the belt loop. And I use the layout lines on the actual uh, cutting board itself as a guide. Same thing, mark out where the holes are going to go. I've marked out that now, look, and what I'm going to do now is skive the back, leather down slightly thin on the back edge, 
and I use uh, this little knife which my friend Patrick from uh, Angus Knives made for me. It's an ideal tool for this. Bit of a bit of a knack, bit of a, you know, you need to practice because you can take too much off and if you do that you scrap your work. But by doing this this helps the the sheath to sit, the, the, the loop to sit a bit better and nicer on the sheath. I skived it down to about a third of its thickness away, so there's still plenty of strength there. This allows it to sit down a bit neater. Let's see how I do. We get an edge beveler, number two edge beveler. This is. And I bevel the edges on the outside of the sheath and going right from the corner all the way round. And stop there. Start there. Right the way to the corner. On the inside, I start roughly where the stitching is going to end, which is about there, where the welt will come to. Uh, I go all the way round. and stop just there where the threads come to that's the edge beveled the next thing I do now uh, is dampen the sheath down where I want to stamp my logo and put my logo impression in next thing I do I come to my little arbor press in the workshop with a little half ton arbor press I've got my stamp and I position it on the sheath where I want it to go, making sure it's orientated the right way. Make sure it's lined up. And then uh, give it a certain amount of pressure and hold it for a little bit. Too much and you get the uh, edge of the stamping press into it as well so I don't want to do that. That should do the job. And there's the stamp in the leather. Next comes the die in the sheath next and I've uh, just marked through the stitch holes there roughly where my uh, loop's gonna go on the sheath so I won't dye that area up in there. But what I will do with that area is just scratch it up a little bit with a scratch all type of thing just helps the the glue to bond just in that area dampen the sheath down in preparation for dyeing it
Well, that's the uh, sheaf all tied up now. And what I then do, I don't die all the way down, there's no point. I then dampen down the edges. You can get a, a preparation called gum tragacanth. That's a very nice word. Gum tragacanth. Uh, to apply to the edges, uh, which helps the burnishing. But I, I just use soap, soap, and this is uh, this is dove. So when you see these people, when they get their knives and they sort of like, and they smell the leather, <laughs> what they're probably smelling is the dove soap. Um, no, they are smelling leather preparation as well. So they're, they're smelling the chemicals, the dye. You know, just smear a bit of um, a bit of soap on around the edges like that. And I get this this tool here, burnishing tool. Just give it a bit of elbow grease. And this just this rounds the edges over, and makes the edges really smooth and nice. The edge bevel obviously makes that makes it happen because if it was square edges, you wouldn't get such a nice rounded over appearance. Now I'm going to apply some contact adhesive to these exposed areas here. Being careful not to go uh, outside these areas, otherwise it makes a mess. I use a thin, I thin the the um, the contact adhesive down so that way it actually gets absorbed into the leather and just really makes a very strong bond. What is contact adhesive? So this particular sheath for Stephen, he wants um, a dangler. So I've got to put the D-ring on now. If I don't put the D-ring on now, I'll have to tear it all apart and start again. And I've done that on many occasions. D ring goes on, make sure it all matches up. I say it is contact, so it will form a bond straight away, but a little tap. But I always clamp it just for a few minutes and make a cup of tea. Right, back after my lunch actually. And what I've done, I've banged the holes through with my with my uh, stitching chisels, uh, and I've uh, made a groove. I don't know how well you can see that. I've made a groove for the thread to sit in. That's quite important because if you don't do that, the the thread will sit proud of the leather. And when you uh, put the knife in and out over time. The chances are it might actually uh, wear the thread and the thread could go thin and then fail and your strap will end up coming under. So that's that and the next thing now is to stitch that up. I'm now stitching 2 o'clock according to the grandfather clock. These are nylon thread, the plaited thread. This is about £50 breaking strain. Uh, two needles. So you can see I'm going out through one side and out through the other. And I go through one side, take the thread around it and back on the back and then come through and then around. And what that does, that forms a that forms a locking knot. Just cinch it up. So back, put the thread around the back. through and around and over, cast it over. And that will form a knot which uh, thread that will form a stitch which will not come undone.
Next up, I've made them a welt. The welt is a piece of leather which goes in between. Um, so this is where the, the cutting edge of the knife will cut against, or rest against, rather than cut into the threads. It will rest on the welt. Uh, and I've marked the welt. I've actually dyed the internal on top of the welt because if you get glue on that when you glue that in it will never take a dye and if you look into the sheath it won't look finished so the next thing to do now is um, is to glue the welt to one side just making sure I keep inside the line See the glue's it's sort of quite uh, it's not too runny but it's got a consistency which allows it to penetrate the leather. I, I sort of thin it down a little bit. That way um, tip I learnt off of Lee really. It just uh, gives it a stronger bond. And I'll put a couple of uh, a couple of coats on as well, I'll let that sort of go off a little bit and I'll put another coat on. And the same on the well, they both get two coats. In actual fact, this gets a bit of a scratch up because this is shiny side up. This just gives the glue more chance to penetrate the leather. Gives it a key. Right, that's the uh, well glued into one side now. Next thing I'll do, this is very important, I use a product called Resiline. And this basically it seals. The, uh, the leather. You've got to do it now because you can't do it once the two sides are glued together. This, this waterproofs the inside of the sheath uh, and it, it forms a very good um, barrier between the, the steel and the leather. Um, and it, it, with veg tan leather, especially with O1 tall steel, it can, it can stain really really easily so this this forms a barrier stop not stop that from happening and as I say it waterproofs the inside of the sheath as well it's an acrylic product so once you put it on it's on for good That's the sheath. Glue on the welts and glue on the uh, the other side, so it's just matter now joining them together. Making sure you keep things nice and even. It doesn't matter if it's a little bit and even at the moment because you can sound it you can sound it level before we put the edge coat on. And just uh, tap the sheath down to make sure two glue surfaces. And the sheets begin to take shape. The 
The next thing I do now, um, get a block of wood, put some leather behind it, and I get my um, pricking irons, and I go through the holes again. And Louise asked me how do I do this bit, so this is how I do it Louise, I literally just make sure I'm holding, the, uh, holding that vertical and bang it all the way through, like that. And what you get on the far side, and just see the chisels are just coming out the far side. Now these chisels leave a diamond shape in the lever, so you've got to continue that shape through to the other side. And so what I then do is just go through with the awl. The awl again is uh, uh, like a, a diamond shape. So you marry it up with the with the the front holes and push it through. And the same for that one there. Now I'll do that to all of these now and I'll bring you back in a minute. Because the picking irons have gone almost all the way through, it doesn't take that much pressure to push the all through the rest of the way. Right, I've gone through with the all on both sides now and I've put the stitch groove in so it's just a matter now just dyeing that little stitch groove uh, with some dye because you don't want any, any sort of white leather that showing so it's got a very very fine brush just a matter of going in there Taking that line in and waiting a little while for that bit of dye to uh, dry a bit and then um, then you can stitch it. Hope that answers uh, your questions Louise and also uh, Robert, Robert Clark if you're watching. Do you reckon I'll go to heaven now? Robert was a, Robert's a very good level worker and uh, he says uh, you should always punch lever and not drill it. Sometimes if you've got a really thick pieces of lever to go for I think you've got to drill it then. Um, but anyway for the standard knife sheath you can uh, use a punch. So I'll let that dry and then I'll stitch it up. Whilst I'm waiting for that to dry, I might as well come and uh, try to do this edge up along here. So for that I use my, uh, my, uh, my grinder just to smooth that edge down. edges down. Next uh, thing to do is um, find my glasses. Next thing to do is find my glasses. Oh, I can do this without the glasses. Put them down somewhere. Anyway, um, carefully uh, bevel the edge of the sheath. Like that. Go 
go around the top. All these little uh, leather bits and pieces that I take off the sheet, I just push them onto the floor. At the end of the day, my dining room floor is an absolute mess. Right, that's um, that. Then, uh, then what I do, same as I did for the top edge of the sheath, just give it a dampen down. Get some soap. Give it a bit of a rev in with the soap. I say you can use that substance called gun tragacanth. And then with the burnishing tool, just burnish the edges. See, there's always a procedure. The way that, in anything that you do in knife making, or probably in lots of things in life, there's a procedure to do it, a way to do it. And um, I didn't do the stitching because that was damp in there from the dye, so I ground the edge flush. And now I'm smoothing the edge off, but I'm not going to edge coat the edge yet because it's still damp, so I'll do the stitching. Once the stitching is done, that will have dried, so then I'll do the edge coat. And it's little things like that that you pick up through repetition, little ways of doing things. Um, I don't think there's any set way to, to, to build the sheath. With everyone that does it, like with knife making, we've probably all got our own different ways of doing things. You know, there's no right way. There is a wrong way, I suppose, but there's no right way, and I suppose everyone does it a little bit different, their own way to get the result they want. And this is the way I do it. There may be better ways, but this is what works for me so far, anyway. So basically, what that's done now, it's given me a, a nice smooth surface which I'll lead edge coat in a little while. Next is stitching. Stitching is done the same way as I did on the belt loop. Basically it's, a, it's a through. Around on the back edge, underneath itself. Through and cast it over. And that forms that, that knot. And the only difference is that I start at the top on this little section here uh, and work to the bottom and then I reverse myself, reverse the thread back on itself. Now each pass through a thread has um, 55 pounds of breaking strain. So you've got one going that way, one going that way. So you've got 110 pounds of breaking strain, but then you're coming back on yourself. So this little section here has approximately 220 pounds of breaking strain per thread. Um, so I think it is absolutely highly unlikely your know, chief is ever going to fail through the, the threads breaking. So the only thing which um, can cause that to fail is uh, is abrasion and provided the threads are sitting in a stitch groove that shouldn't happen. Also they can get a bit tight so uh, when you're going through two threads through one hole so I use a pair of pliers to, um, to pull the thread through. Adjustment on that, I think. Right, I'll bring it back in a minute when I got a bit further down.
Okay, well I stitched it all up now, so I'm just going to run over the stitches with what's called a, an overstitch wheel. This just aligns the threads, the stitches, and sort of seats them into position. And just neatens things up a little bit. And that's the stitching done. And you can see the back, all the threads down beneath the surface, all in line. So finally I'll put the edge coat on this sheaf now, that's now dry. Now my friend Lee said you should use a brush, but I don't get on with brushes. Last time I used a brush I made a right mess. Um, So I use a sponge. And it works for me. You've got to be careful with this stuff because you get a, a little bit on your hands and pick the sheaf up. Next thing you know you've transferred it onto the sheaf. And it's a devil to get off. So I just gonna uh, use my sponge and then just apply sparingly and just build it up. Whilst the end of Part one, I've basically now um, built the sheaf. I've got the edge coat on. Next stage is to uh, dampen the sheaf and uh, partially sort of wet form it to the knife that's going to go in there. In this case, it's going to be for Stephen, Mary's son. Um, so, in part two, you'll see me wet form, more partial wet form this sheaf to Stephen's knife and then I'll show you the finished article and the finished knife. So I hope you've enjoyed that, I hope it's helped somebody and um, I did this more for to show you guys and you know what my knives or who I'm thinking about buying my knives in the future what uh, I put into uh, making my sheaves and my leather work and my knives etc. There's no shortcuts uh, it all takes time uh, and you end up with a good product hopefully something which will last many years Thanks for watching, say part two coming up soon.